Let's go ahead this morning and let's appreciate Neil Wang for that, for that word this morning. And we are, wherever you are seated this morning, can you just go ahead and bless this perfect sacrifice? Jesus, can you just bless him for that which he did for us on the cross? Is the perfect sacrifice. No one can do that which he did. It's our rock of ages. We have come this morning to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for being the perfect example for us. Thank you, Father, because we know greater things you will yet do. As the people, we have come this morning to appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. This morning, please encourage me and smile to someone this morning and say good morning. Hallelujah. I just ask someone, say, are you really growing? What's the response of the person? Ask someone again, saying, are you really growing? <laughs> Precious Father, we heard that you will speak to every heart this morning, and your name alone be exalted at the end. Thank you, Precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1 this morning. Second Peter chapter 1, I read from verse 1 to 12. Simon Peter is servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. We are by a given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. We are for the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last verse. We are for, I will not be neg negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Colossians chapter 6 from verse 6. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I welcome the church online. The Lord bless you as you are part of us fully this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For some weeks now in Global this Church, Agudi, we, are, we started this series on um, growing up spiritually. And we have been taught in this house through these uh, weeks that the intention of God for us when we got born again is not just to sit and think that uh, Somehow, somehow, things we align, things we happen. I've been taught that uh, one thing that we need to do after we, have, after we have accepted Christ is to grow. God expects us to grow. God doesn't just want us to come to him and just be. God expects us to grow. God expects us to, to know him more. And uh, one of the things that we have heard, okay, let me just quickly do a little of that before 
I move on. One of the things that we have, uh, uh, we have heard is that there's a need for spiritual life before spiritual growth. And that is very, very crucial. There is a need for spiritual life. The seed that we have been born again, the seed has to be there first. And it's because the seed is there, that's when we can say that we are growing. So there's a need for spiritual life before spiritual growth. And we have also heard that spiritual growth is for every believer. Until his face we see, we will keep growing. That's why I'm still asking the question, are you really growing? So it's not for a group of people. It's not for some set of people. We should not be saying, ah, no, growth is, spiritual growth is actually for uh, those that are, have just accepted Christ. No, spiritual growth is for every believer. There's a need, to, there's a need for continue, to continue the process. So we can't just get to a level and you just say, I have reached the limit. I don't think I need the growth again. No, there's need for continuity in, our, in the growth process. So it is not also automatic. We have to be deliberate about it. We have to work on it, on the need for us to grow. Though it takes time, but there's a need for us to be intentional about it. Then also, spiritual growth is not a secret event. It is visible for all to see. I always say that if it is in the art, it will show in the act. You can't be saying that uh, I am growing, it's just that it's in my art. If it's surely in your heart, it will be evident for all to see. And also, as I said, it's also... A process so this is what we have heard so far uh, and uh, just a recap we have heard much more but uh, I just want to also be on a thought this morning on practices that leads to spiritual growth practices that lead to spiritual growth from where we have as I just want to just mention this that everything that I'm going to say may be things that we have heard before so it's just to remind us so as, as we read also in uh, uh, that Second Peter chapter 1, just, it's for us to just keep reminding ourselves that these are things that need to be done for us to reach that limit that God has in store for us. And I know we will get there in Jesus' name. Someone may be asking, so what is this spiritual growth? So what is this spiritual growth? We have heard various things, various thoughts about it. And I just want to also say it's an external expression of internal work that God has done. It's an external expression of internal work that God has done. God has done things in us. God has planted seed in us. But now we need to give such that work that he has done an external expression. We need to work it out. It is also a deliberate act of being aware of spiritual things. Things and everything is not on the same level. So spiritual growth to us is a deliberate act. It's an action that we need to continuously put into practice. It's an act of being aware of spiritual things. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. And if you see the Colossians chapter 2 that we read in that verse, uh, uh, verse 6, Colossians chapter 2 from verse 6, it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, can see that the, only, the, the other thing that, he, uh, that is made mention of is that so walk ye in him. So you have received Christ Jesus. We are not expected to stop there. We are not expected to say that is the, that is the end. What we need to do in the growth process is that we need to walk in him. We need to walk in him. We need to develop ourselves. We need to grow in him. And that is the expectation. God wants us to grow. Because we even in the uh, in, in, the, in every family, when the child is born, and by the time the, uh, the boy or girl is probably like two, and he or she has another, another brother, that's when the work starts. That's why you will say, okay, go and bring your brother's cream. So the work has begun. So, and that is also, uh, uh, can be likened to us in the house too. If we, when we have come to the Lord, when we have come to his house, we are not, we are not just to sit down. We need to do our own work for us to grow. So the, let, me, let me just quickly begin what I have here this morning because of our time. The first practice that, that leads to growth, that leads to spiritual growth now, is that there's a need to feed on this world. You know, I've said these are the things that we have heard before, just to remind ourselves. Feed on this world. Brethren, a hungry Christian is a healthy Christian. We cannot just say that uh, we want to grow and we are not eating.
not I see the blood. Yes, we are seeing the blood, and the blood you are seeing is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Job chapter 23 and verse 12. The Bible says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than the necessary food. This is a thing that we need to take uh, even very seriously this season. Matthew, 4, Matthew uh, 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 chapter 4 and verse 4. Matthew 4, 4. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is the expectation for us. We need to feed on the world. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. Thy words were found. I mean, you, can, you can't find something. For you to find something, that means that you need to be diligent. You need to seek it. So for us to, for us to feed in the world, there's a need for us to seek the world. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. There's a need for us to meditate. There's a need for us to take in the word of God large volume. Probably you are here this morning that um, all that you are taking is just two or three verses of the word. Thank God at least you have started. But there is more you can do. You can do much more. Because the, the, the volume also, also is also very, very essential. At this level, you can't say after, after, after six, seven, eight years in the Lord that you have accepted Christ. All that is known with you is you have made a covenant that it cannot be more than five verses a day. You can't grow like that. Hallelujah, someone this morning. Praise the Lord. So commit yourself to a regular and disciplined intake of God's words daily, when and when not. There are times that you will open the Bible and you will feel like, what is this one saying? Yet we still need to read it. Because God will not do anything. Everything that he will do, he will be inside the world. Nothing will be done outside this world. So the understanding and the knowledge of this will motivate us to come to his word and be rejoicing in it. Hallelujah this morning. Now, how do I study this word? Now, spend time on your own. Let's check this, uh, uh, this group of people in Acts of Apostles chapter 17 and verse 11. Acts of Apostles chapter 17. This is talking about the Iberian Christian. He said, the Bible says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures monthly. Is it monthly? Okay, let me read that place again. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scripture weekly. It is daily. Whether those things were so. So this is another level whereby we know that you are growing. It's not that everything that comes to you, you receive like that. The Bible talks about these people that they search those things. They, they search the scriptures daily. Why? Because they want to discover if those things that they've heard is actually true. And that is also expected of us. For us to grow, there's a need for us to also be intentional in our study of the word of God. Also gathering together with the saints. It's another how we can, we can, we can, we can uh, uh, feed on the world. Wednesdays we meet in the church. Also in, uh, on Sundays like this we meet. And thank God for the platform that we have created in the church. Whereby in our spiritual growth groups we can meet and discuss the word of God. So we ask another how is gathering with the saints. Because to me, someone, maybe you have been reading a verse of the scripture. And another person has just read the place and it just... I have just spoken about it. I just say, wow, this is another level. So that is another way to grow. Hallelujah. You may not, you may not have the access to all the revelation, but another one that someone else has gotten can also be a blessing to you. So a very crucial practice that will lead to spiritual growth is for need for us to feed on his word and also to listen to someone. Thank God for this generation because we have different platform now we are back we can listen to the word and we can hear him speaking to us and i know at the end of this time and the rest of our life it will be said concerning us in global Harvest church at good GRA, that we are growing in jesus name and on his face we keep growing in the name of the lord jesus and another practice this morning is that there's a need for us to nurture a prayer life Nurture a prayer life. You know, I've, I've said it that these are things that we have heard before. But just for us to remind ourselves, nurture a prayer life. 
And when I'm saying uh, nurture a prayer life, I, I, I'm speaking about uh, a situation whereby every, your prayer life will not be centered on you. Your prayer life will not be all about me, I, and myself. If, if we gather together to pray, one of the things that we see that we know if you are growing is, okay, let's pray for Nigeria. And that's when the, your, your, your voice just goes down. Or let's pray for people in um, Ukraine. Or let's pray for people in the northern part of Nigeria where issues are. And your voice just, just, just goes down. But when the, another person just comes up and says, now let's pray that you just blow anyhow. And we hear your voice again. Brother and sister, you are not growing. So, Nurture a prayer life. Okay, let, let's see our example, the perfect example that we, let's, let's see Jesus in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Mark chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says about Jesus, said, and in the morning, rising up a great while before thee, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he gisted. And there he was playing, and there he prayed. That is the example that Christ has laid for us. Christ prayed. I know many of us will be asking, what's, because I've asked uh, that question too, what do you think Jesus will be praying for? We will not be praying that, we will not pray for some prayer, but I know he prayed. So, and in the morning, he departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. So, you too, let's, let's nurture a prayer life. Maybe your own is a, uh, because I heard that there is a quiet time and there is noisy time. Because there are some people that their own quiet time is noisy time. So whatever area, whatever one you have, let's nurture a prayer life. Let's also, because why I'm emphasizing this is that we have this confidence in our goal. According to 1 John 5, 14, that this is the confidence that we have in him. That when we ask anything according to his will... So he will not do anything outside his will. And if we ask anything according to his will, what he does is that he hears us. God hears us. And that is the confidence I want us to come up with when we are, when we are uh, in the place of prayer. Let's know and have this commitment that, uh, to prayer. Then uh, uh, in, jo in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, God, God expects us to pray unto him. He, 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 he expects us to, he expects to hear our voice. That Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer. And shall be great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are deeper things, sir. There are deeper things, man. And God doesn't want to hide them from, uh, from us. God wants to reveal those things to us. And those things can be, we can get those things, we can, um, those things can be revealed unto us when we pray unto him. And you know, prayer is not just one, one, uh, one route like that. When we talk to him, he also wants to speak with us. I know there are some school of thoughts that uh, whatever, one you, I mean, whatever one you want to do, just start from somewhere. I started this, we whereby just say everything, 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 to you, and now sit down. Okay, so I have spoken. What do you have for us to say, Father? And there are, there are times that when you are when doing that prayer, God just interjects your prayer and he speaks to you. God, he doesn't want to hide anything from us. Don't let us just be looking at our father as someone who is holding two things and just say only one. And this one, I don't want. God wants to show things to us. God wants to reveal to us. And another uh, area I want to look at in, in nurturing a uh, prayer life is the need for us to pray for others. Need for us to pray for others. It shows that we are growing. I, I, I love this uh, a verse of the scripture in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Talks about a certain man says, Epaphras, Epaphras, who is one of you, a, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Look at this man. He was not just praying for himself. He was not just praying for his needs. The Bible says that he prayed for others. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. And the prayer is that, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. And that should also be our own take too. Take up families in prayers. Take up brothers in prayers. Take up members, members, uh, members of the same uh, ministry. Just pray for people. It shows that you are green. And I see this working for us in Jesus' name. 
this season, I want us to have faith project. It shows that we are also growing. Let's have faith project. Let's everything. Maybe I, I, I know I have a friend that from his secondary school days, they, they try to uh, arrange things. Now, we were now like telling, okay, you are, you are in secondary school. You arrange this. You arrange job. They were now trained to arrange babe for him. I was like, say, now, guy, when we, and it's not just that he doesn't want the guy saying this is not the will of God for my life. I said, now, has God spoken to you? Has God said what you are going to say? So how will I? Because all his life, they have been arranging things for him. It's good if you have people that can arrange, but at least let's also take steps. Let's seek God on our own. Let's have faith project this season. And I see God helping us as we are bound in him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Another one like that is that, that we lead, I've, I've said something like that, is that let's always take a step of faith. It also shows that we are growing. Always, not sometimes, always take a step of faith. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 5, uh, uh, from, chapter 5 from verse 4, about uh, Simon Peter. Simon Peter was a, a, a master in his own field. But the Bible says, now when talking about Christ here, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. From verse 5. And Simon answering, being a professional in the field, Master, we have told all the night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And verse 6 says, And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. One of the things that I want us to do this thing, this thing is that let's, let's take a step of faith. Let's take a step of faith. Whatever project that God is laying into your hands, step out. In John chapter 11, verse 39, Jesus Christ came to the tomb of uh, Lazarus. And the first instruction that he gave to them, he said, Take ye away the stone. Take ye away. That's just an instruction. And when that instruction was heeded, the Bible tells us that a miracle followed. So you don't know, most of all that we have been saying, we are waiting on God. God may also be waiting on us. Say, son, take a step. And as we take that step, I see mighty testimonies in Jesus' name. And also, if we also look at John, uh, the book of John, chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible tells us that the, uh, the wedding in Canaan, Jesus just, just gave instruction. Fill the water pot with water. That was the instruction. The Bible now says, look at these people. Guy, these guys are wonderful. Fill the water pot with water. Christ didn't tell them, maybe to the half, to the three quarter, but look at what they did. That was, and they filled them up to the brim. Because they knew anything can just happen. So this season, let's take a step of faith. Agree with someone. Talk to someone. This is what I'm expecting God to do. And it's another sign, it's another practice that we need to emphasize this season, which shows that we are growing. And also, let's take service. Service is also very, very crucial. Service is also very, very crucial. You can't be a part of a, a family and you are not contributing anything. You are not growing. At home, you will see this, okay, you cook, you do this, somebody wash, wash the dishes, somebody iron this. It shows that responsibility and the same thing in our spiritual work every one of us need to contribute to this work this work for this work to progress we every one of us needs to contribute in uh, jesus christ laid a perfect example for us in john chapter 13 from verse 4 to 5 the bible says he took the uh it, okay let's, let's just read it john chapter uh sorry john chapter 13 Okay, so he rises from supper. He laid aside his garment and took a towel and gathered himself. Now I said, after he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherein he was gathered. This is just a perfect example for us. Jesus Christ did it. So we can't we can be in this house and say, my, my gift is not, is not here. What I can do is not here. Please create one. It shows that you are growing. And also if you look at Psalm, Psalm 100 and verse 2, the Bible says, 
verse 2 now says, serve the Lord. How? With gladness. We are not expected to, to serve God grudgingly. Says, serve the Lord with gladness. So an expectation is for, from all, is, 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 we as far as Make from all that we need to serve the Lord and we need to serve Him with gladness. And it shows that you are growing. And it, because in this house, I know all of us, we are graced. We are graced in different capacity. Let's find needs in the, There are still places in this house whereby you can serve. We should not just be looking as whereby it seems every area is, is filled up. No, come on board with us. Be part of this week of this work. Now, how do I serve? Maybe someone is asking that question. How do I serve? Serve him vehemently. It shows that you are growing. Serve him vehemently. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Romans chapter 12 and, ve and verse 11. The Bible says, not slothful in business, vehement in spirit, serving the Lord. We are not to serve him slothfully. When we are serving him, there is a need for us to serve him well, to serve him fervently, as we've seen in that Romans chapter 12, verse 11. And we are also expected to serve him steadfastly. Steadfastness is also required of us in his service. It is, we can't just say, we, we do it when it is convenient for me. When it is not convenient, you, you say bye-bye. No, that is not expected of us. For us, for us to be seen as someone that is growing. Another thing we need is for us to see him, that we serve him steadfastly. Let's just look at it. For as many of us that we just walk into the church like this, and we this into the auditorium this morning, I've seen that everything is in place. Just imagine that everybody is coming when you came. Just imagine that everybody is not doing anything. Just as some of us, we are not doing anything right now. But I know the th things are changing in Jesus' name. So how do you think that the sound will be this morning? How do you think the atmosphere will be this morning? How do you think everything, how do you, how do you, how do you just think that the, the new wine, they will just show up and the song will just flow? No, I know they do more than that. And also, they say also for us to see that you, you are growing spiritually, we, you also need to serve him continuously need to serve him continuously. It doesn't have to be uh, at a time. Because we hear someone asking some people, ah, why is it that you are not doing anything again? And the thing they will tell you is that ah, we have served God when we were in school. Thank God for all the papas and mamas of the NCCF and all the like. But this is another season of your life. So, and growth continues. So, there's also need for us to serve him continuously. And I see him blessing us. I see him enlarging our coast in Jesus' name. And this morning, I, I, this, this part is what I would like to dwell a bit. And I just want you to just stay with me. Another area whereby we see that uh, you are growing is the ability to handle correction and discipline well. Ability to handle corrections and discipline well. Because we have seen we have seen believers that are not disciplined. We have seen deliver, are believers that nobody can talk to them. I believe in a relationship, there are people above, there are people that you're on the same page, and there are people below you. Friends, people should be able to talk to you. Hallelujah. We should not get to a level whereby we think we have arrived, and nobody can just say, bros, this, you, you can do this better. Hallelujah. Bible tells, if you read um, Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, let's, let's read that verse of, the, verse of the scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 11. The Bible says, and ye, no, from verse 5, please. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure the chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, we are of all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirit and live? 
for they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But if for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. But now, now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Brethren, I, I want us to note this, that one of, we, we all, as we meet like this, gather like this, there will be issues, there will be things, but one of the things area, one of the areas that we see if you are growing is the way you undo issues when they come up. Because brethren, there will always be issues. But the way you, you, you handle them identifies and tells us where you are in your spiritual level. Because I have heard people that there are issues. And what you will hear one party say is, it's not that I have anything against you, but for the sake of peace, go your way and let me go on my way. If you are doing that, you are not growing. Hallelujah. And or probably issue, uh, there, there, uh, an issue come up and people are trying to, to come to call the two of you together, say, let this be. And you are saying until his face, whose face? Until his face we see, nobody can talk about it. Whose face are you talking about here? So, there is a need for us to undo discipline and corrections very well. You know, because we are, I know many of us, we have met people that they are just 10 years uh, in Christ. They got born again maybe like 10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, and they are already in 12 or 13 churches. Why? Because any issue just come up like this, and nobody, they are, they are, they are the Methuselah of this time. They are older than everybody. They are, no, nobody can just correct them. And this is not good for us. And it doesn't show that and that individual is growing. So surround yourself, you surround your life with good advisors. And the multitude of good counsel, the Bible said there is safety. There, is, there are people that we just, people should, there are some people that are, maybe the way I'm thinking, but that, I, I think this is right. Some people should be able to look at your face and say, J.D., this what you are doing is not right. They should be able to tell you that. I know many of you know in this house that we have a father, we have an angel in this house. You all agree with me? Hallelujah. But if you are close to him, you will have another testimony. And the testimony is a very good one. Hallelujah. Because you can't be around him and you are you are doing what you like. If we look at your face and we tell you, this is how it ought to be. But you are corrected. I just say, that is all. That is not good enough. It, it doesn't show that you are growing spiritually. Or probably you are a leader in a group and somehow, somehow, the button has to change. And because the button has to change, you are now looking at the person and said, if not for, for what happened. People like us could not be talking together. It shows you are not growing. Praise the Lord. And there, there's another way some people will say some things. Permit me, if you cannot interpret it well in Yoruba. I, the, 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 the statement is actually in Yoruba, but just, just, just interpret it well. Uh, issues will come up, and some people are uh, just telling you, hmm, if not that the rain that fell, that made chicken and pigeon to be packed together. Who are you to be talking to me like that? Just, just uh, ask, ask your neighbor to interpret that for you. So it shows if you are still in that category, you are not growing. You are not growing. And some people, you correct them, they will think that because of, hallelujah, church. Some people will think because you have corrected them and uh, you, are, you, are, you have seen the circumstance they are in, and that is why you, you can talk to them like that. Brethren, until his face we see, we will always step on one another, but there must be a need for us to be disciplined. There must be a need for us to, to be corrected. People should look at you and say, bro, Josh, this is not right. If you don't have such people in your life, please check your spiritual growth gauge. You need such people around you. And I know in this season, God God has actually brought those people around us. Our prayer will be that open our eyes, that we will see such people and we align with them in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord this morning. So Global Harvest Church, this season, I want us to be deliberate about, about our, growth, our growth level. That's where the church has created a platform whereby we have a spiritual growth groups. Please, I want every one of us to be a part. I want to encourage every one of us to be a part of that group. And when you are in that group, don't just be a silent listener. Don't be a silent partaker. Contribute. Ask questions. Ask, contribute your own quota to the growth of that group. And if you have not gotten this book, I want to encourage every one of us, let's get this book. The, the book is available at our, our bookshop. Let's get the book. Don't let us just get it and put it in our shelves. Let's read the book. The book is actually loaded for us. And I know this season, the Lord is going to continue to send his words to our heart as we grow daily in Jesus' name. His grace is sufficient for us and his mighty power is made perfect in everything that we do in Jesus' name. I want to say congratulations if you have known Christ. The desire of God for you is for you to grow. Titus chapter 2 and verse verse 8, the Bible says, in everything, be a pattern of good work. That is the expectation of God for us, to be a pattern of good work, to, to grow to a level whereby we also will be able to bring all other up. And I see that happening for us. I see his grace being sufficient for us this season and all our days in Jesus' name. Can we just bow down our heads this morning? And I want you to just ask God. Ask God for strength. If you have known him, Ask for, for strength to know him more. Ask for strength to continue to grow in him. Hallelujah. And if you are here this morning and you have not in any way or any, any, uh, any day you have not given your heart to the Lord, all that I've said will, will not be anything even to you. I want you to bow to your heart this morning and I want you to speak unto him. Call unto him this morning and say, Father, speak to me this morning. Confess him as the Lord and Savior of your heart. Ask him to come to your heart this morning. Confess him with your heart. Believe him in your heart this morning and confess him with your mouth. And I see him doing extra big and things in your life in Jesus' name. Father, as men that has taken this decision this morning to serve you and to come unto you. Father, I heard that your power will overwhelm them in the name of Jesus. Your strength will be made available for them to continue in this journey.